Hello! In this video, I'm showing you how to install the Hive Thermostat Mini into a combination boiler. Now, I'm installing this as just a wireless thermostat on its own. There's no hub to set up. There's no smartphone operation. It's just a wireless thermostat to turn your heating on and off when a house gets to the correct temperature, which you set it to. Now, if you do want to use your smartphone to set times and temperatures to control your central heating and you haven't got a Hive hub, then you're going to need this other pack here, which has got the hub in it. And then you'll be able to link it to your smartphone. But I'm going to make a separate video all about doing that. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of options of how to wire the thermostat up and importantly, how to wire it into your combination boiler, because all the combination boilers are different. If you want to install this mini thermostat onto a traditional system, then I made a separate video for doing that because the wiring is completely different. I'm going to show you how to pair the two units together. And if you're having trouble getting them to connect, I'm going to show you how to factory reset the thermostat, which then allows them to connect. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you lots of different combination boilers and how to wire the thermostat into them. Just before I get on with the video, I want to quickly let you know I've made another video, which is all about this unit. So what's inside the box, because there's no screws or wall plugs in here, the stand options you can use, how to use the menus once you set it up. And again, more information about wiring it up. If you want to watch that video, I'll leave it in the cards above now. And of course, you can find it down in the description, where there's also lots of other really helpful links to other videos I've made. Right, now let's get on with this video. So here's our combination boiler, and this is an ideal independent. And I've been called to this property because their wireless Honeywell room thermostat has finally stopped working. So I'm going to be replacing this old wireless thermostat with the new Hive Thermostat Mini. Now here's the old receiver unit. It's not been screwed down and it's just been floating about inside the cupboard here. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the power. So this one was just plugged in. So I've just removed the plug. Now I know there's no power on the boiler or the receiver unit. I can now take it apart. So using a small screwdriver, I release the clips and now I can take a look at the wiring on the back plate. So I can see here that there is a five core flex, which is taking the power and the thermostat switch wires up to the boiler. There's also a three core flex from the mains, which is supplying 230 volts to the receiver unit. And it's also linked with the five core flex, which takes that power up to the boiler. So let's take a look at this a little bit more closely. Here we have the earth wire, which comes in on that three core flex. And they've used an electrical connector to join the earth wires together to take earth up to the boiler. You can also see there's the brown and the blue on that three core flex. So that's live and neutral. And that's linked again to the five core flex, which is then taking that live and neutral up to the boiler. And then we have the black and the gray, which are the two switch wires to turn the boiler on and off. Now these switch wires will be wired into the circuit board on the boiler. These could be low voltage, say 24 volts, or they could be high voltage at 230 volts. One thing which is absolutely clear is that we must not muddle these wires up. If we do accidentally muddle them up, we could easily blow the printed circuit board on the boiler. And you definitely don't want to be doing that because they cost in the region of £200 plus an installation fee. So if you're in any doubt, always call a gas registered engineer. So now I'm just loosening all the screws so I can remove the wires from the old back plate. Once I've done that, I can then just clean all the wires up, ready to be installed into the new back plate on the new Hive receiver. So all I'm doing here is pulling the wires straight and then twist them around to make them into a nice clean straight point, which I can then just install easily into the new back plate on the Hive unit. And there we go, they're all done now. So now I'm gonna wire up the receiver unit. So now I need to loosen the two screws on the bottom of the receiver. I'm not going to remove them completely. I just need to loosen them off so the screws go below the receiver like that. The receiver then hinges away from the back plate like that sort of hinges from the top there. And then we got the receiver in it and we got the back plate just here. So I'm going to put the receiver in it to one side, keep it safe. Now I'm going to loosen all the screws on the back plate, which are going to be used. Now, if we take a look on the back of the receiving it, you'll see that there is a wiring diagram showing exactly which wires we should be putting where. Why Hive has made this diagram so small, I don't know. But you can see there is a live and neutral. 
supplying power to the unit and our switch wires are on one and three. So I'm now going to loosen off screws live and neutral and also terminals one and three. And because we have an earth wire, I'm going to also loosen off the earth connection as well. Now I've turned it upside down so that when I loosen off the screw, I can see the little plate underneath the screw, which then drops down. And I can see how much space I've got to put my wire into. Now I could screw the back plate to the wall first of all, and that might make it easier to insert the wires and screw them down. But if when the back plate is fitted to the wall, it's in an awkward position, it's much easier to install the wires like this and then screw the back plate to the wall after you've completely finished wiring it up. You can see with this installation, the receiver unit is right on the back wall where it's a bit tricky to get to. I'm just going to trim back some of these wires because some of them are a little bit long and there'll be lots of wire hanging out at the bottom of the clamp. And I don't want lots of wire hanging out. That's unsafe. So now I've got my two live wires. So that's power coming in and power being taken up to the boiler. Now here's a little tip for you. If you turn it upside down and give it a little shake, the plate drops down and then it's much easier to insert the wire. Now this can be a little fiddly and you definitely need three hands. But you can see here I'm holding the plate and I'm also holding the two wires. I can then do up the screw, keeping the wires in place until the screw is nice and tight. And there we go. And then after I've done that, I just want to give the wires a little tug just to make sure they are nice and secure and they are not going to be pulled out. I can then continue with the rest of the wires until the plate is fully wired up. Now, if you have got two wires, sometimes it's much easier just to twist the two wires together and then it's much easier to insert them. And there we go. That's my neutral wires now done. Then I continue with the rest of the wires and I just finish off with the earth wire. And there we go. That's it all wired up. I've got my live coming in and live up to the boiler. We've got our neutral coming in and a neutral to the boiler. And we've also got the two switch wires on one and three. And of course, there's also earth to the boiler as well. Now, something I'm a little bit annoyed with myself here. I've left these wires a little bit long. I should have cut them back much shorter. So if I'm leaving like this, these wires are going to be hanging out to the bottom of the receiver unit. And that's not really acceptable. But if I just curl the wires up a little bit inside, then I can cut the little plastic piece on the bottom, which kind of clamps the wires that will hold it in place and that'll be perfectly OK. So now I'm just going to use my side cutters and just carefully cut that bit of plastic on the bottom there. I can then just carefully break it out like that. And then that should be the perfect size to hold these wires nice and snug. I'm now going to screw the back plate onto the cabinet. Ideally, you want to keep the receiving unit as far away from the boiler and pipework as possible. Some manufacturers say a foot, that's 300 millimeters. Also, try not to fit it directly underneath your boiler, because if your boiler ever leaks, the leaking water could go onto the receiving unit and break it. Now the back plate is nice and secure. I can fit the receiver box to its back plate. I just put it on the top there and then just hinge it down. And then I can do it the two screws on the bottom there, making sure that the wires are in the correct position. I can now do up the two screws. You just need to nip them up and then they should be level with the bottom of the receiver unit. And there we go. Now it's all ready to be powered on. Now, before I power it on, I always like to check the wiring inside the boiler. Now, I've no idea who fitted this boiler, but whoever did has wired it up incorrectly. We've got our live neutral and earth supplying power to the boiler. And then we got our two switch wires, which are the gray and the black wires. And they've been wired into the frost thermostat, not into the room thermostat. Now, whilst this has been working OK, obviously it should be wired into the room stat slash timer, which you can see on the left hand side there. So now I've corrected that wiring and you can see we've got the live neutral earth as before, but our switch wires, which are the black and the gray wire, they are now wired into the room stat slash timer. So that's it for the wiring. Now it's time to get the two units, the receiving it and the thermostat talking to each other. And that's called pairing. Now I'm going to show you this next part from my desk at home. So I've turned on the power to the receiving it and you can see the light in the top there is flashing amber. You've got like a double flash and then it's off for a second and another double flash and it keeps repeating. Now, whilst it's doing this, we can do a quick check and make sure that we've got it wired incorrectly. Push that button there 
and that should bring the heating on. If you push it again, it'll start flashing and it should turn the heating off. And after a few seconds, the green light will go out. So now let's power on the room thermostat. If we go to the back of the thermostat, we can pull the back in place off and then we've got this little tag here. We remove the tag and then that will then power it on. It then shows the welcome screen and then it says welcome to Hive. And then after a few seconds, it will show us some technical information and then it's gonna start searching for the receiver unit. And there we go, now it says searching. So the thermostat is now in pairing mode and now we need to put the receiver into pairing mode. So to do that, we need to go back to the receiver unit. Then all we need to do is to press and hold this button for 10 seconds. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and then the light should change to this purpley white color it's not really clear here but it is flashing purpley white and you can see it's flashing one second on and then one second off and then any second it's going to say pairing and the two units will then be linked together once they're connected the light on the top of the receiving it will turn to a solid green and there we go solid green and it now says pairing and then any second it'll say pairing successful and then our thermostat will be ready to use. Job done. We can now turn our boiler on and off from the room thermostat. No hub, no Wi-Fi setup, no smartphone. It's now just gonna work as a basic thermostat. Now, if you're having trouble getting the two units to connect together, and I certainly did with this one here, you can see it's been searching for three minutes now and it still hasn't found the receiver unit. And it was still searching after about 15 minutes and that's when I gave up. I tried restarting the process a couple of times, but it still wouldn't connect. Now, if you are having that problem, all we need to do is to do a factory reset on the room thermostat. And I show exactly how to do that in just a second. Briefly back to the working thermostat. So all I need to do to operate the thermostat is just press the up arrow like that. You can see the temperature rising. And then any second, it's gonna make the green light come on, and then that will turn the boiler on. And there we go, there's the green light. And now the boiler's turned on. Then the thermostat will go back to the actual temperature of the room. So the house here is only 13 degrees because the heating's not been working. And now we're gonna see the blue light come on on the boiler indicating that the burner is now lit and the central heating is now on. If I touch the middle button, it'll light the display up and it'll show me the actual temperature of the room. It'll then show me the temperature that the heating is set to, which is 21 degrees. And then after a short time, the screen will go out. Now all that's left to do is to fit the thermostat to the wall and remove the protective plastic film. And there we go. Now we just need to do a little bit of decoration around the new thermostat. And that's it, job done. New thermostat fitted to the combi boiler. Now all you need to do if you can't get the two units to connect together is to do that factory reset. Now the receiver unit is already in binding mode or pairing mode and the light is flashing that purpley white color one second on, one second off. And you can see that the thermostat says it's now been searching for over six minutes. Now all we need to do is to press and hold these two buttons together. In red writing, you'll see it says factory reset and it counts down 10 seconds. Keep your fingers on the two buttons or icons until the hive symbol comes up on the display and then you can release the two buttons. And now the thermostat is reset to its factory settings. And you can see it's going through the startup process and it's gonna start searching for the receiver unit. Now on this occasion, the thermostat found the receiver within 24 seconds but sometimes I have found that it's taken several minutes before it has found receiving it. So then go jumping into this reset process too soon. I'm not sure how long you should wait. You could try starting the process all over again. So you turn off the receiving it, take a battery out of the thermostat and start the process all over again. But going back to my thermostat, you can see 24 seconds, it's now started pairing. The light on the receiving unit has turned to a solid green. And any second, the screen is gonna change and say pairing successful. And now the two units are paired together. And the screen changes a couple more times before it finally goes out. And that's it, so the factory reset worked fine. And now the two units are happily talking to each other. 
Just before I get on with wiring inside combination boilers, let me very quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 30 years and I make help videos to help you with your gas boiler and your central heating. If you find this video useful, then please give me a bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find this video. You can click on the subscribe, ring on the bell to get a notification and share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who has bought me a cup of coffee and left a small donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which I hopefully help you. Now when it comes to wiring the thermostat into your combination boiler, every boiler can be slightly different and you probably need the manufacturer's instructions and a good understanding of wiring. Because like I said earlier, if you get this wiring wrong, you may end up destroying your circuit board, which could cost you hundreds of pounds to replace. And I must point out as being a gas registered engineer, that only someone who is deemed as being competent should remove the cover of a gas boiler. So for your own safety, if you're in any doubt, call a gas registered engineer and I'll leave a link in the description below to the UK gas register where you can find a local gas registered engineer. Now what is common in all these combination boilers is we have a live neutral and an earth which supplies power to the boiler and then we have our switch wires which are to tell the boiler to run the central heating. Now here you have a slightly older Valiant Ecotech combination boiler and we've got a live neutral and an earth and then we've got the switch wires which are on terminals three and four. And then here we have a slightly newer Valiant Ecotech combination boiler and we've got live neutral and earth on a green plug and then we've got the RT connection which is room thermostat on the purple plug but on this boiler, the 24 volt RT connection has been used. One thing that is imperative here is that we must not muddle up these high voltages with low voltages. That will definitely blow your circuit board. Now my preferred method of wiring is to use a five core flex, and then we have a live neutral and an earth. And then I've got two switch wires, which are on terminals one and three. Here's the same method again, but instead I'm using two bits of three core flex. So we've got a live neutral and an earth, and we've got two switch wires. When I don't want to use two switch wires, I would then wire the receiver unit up like this. So we have a live neutral and earth, then I have a link wire from a live onto terminal one, supplying power to switch, and then we have a switch wire coming out on terminal three. My other video linked in the description below gives you more information about wiring of the receiver unit. This ideal combination boiler has been wired in with a live neutral and an earth, and then a link wire has been used, so there's only one wire coming back in to supply power for switch live. And finally, here we have the Worcester boiler, and again, we've got live neutral and earth. We've got two 30 volts going out on the white plug and then a switch live coming back in on the yellow plug. Always check in your boiler manual for the wiring instructions. There'll be a label somewhere on your boiler telling you exactly what boiler you have. And then you can look online to find the instructions that's if you don't have the installation manual. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope this video has been helpful to you. If you wanna watch my video on the unboxing of this unit, wiring options, stand options, click on the link just there. If you wanna know how to link it up to the Hive Hub and use your smartphone, you can click on that link just there. You can always give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, ring on the bell, subscribe. And if you wanna get me a cup of coffee, there is always my toolbox fund. Bye for now, see you next time.